Our next great discovery occurred in the 19th century when many chemists believe that organic substances from organisms or living things were somehow different from inorganic substances, from non-living things. But that was about to change. In 1828, Friedrich Wohler was working in his lab when something caught his eye. Wohler had placed two inorganic chemicals in a beaker, potassium cyanate and ammonium sulfate. Now when he looked at the beaker, it contained a gram's worth of small, white, needle-shaped crystals. What made this remarkable was that Wohler thought he'd seen these exact same crystals once before, but with an important difference. Those crystals had been organic. He had crystallized them while studying the chemistry of various substances found in urine. To make sure he wasn't mistaken, Wohler analyzed the new crystals. There was no mistake. These crystals were the same as those he had isolated before. He had made urea, which was something that had come out of a living thing. He had made it out of inorganic substances. Later, he said in a personal letter, not in the paper, he wrote about it, that I have made urea without a kidney. And he knew what he had done. Meet Roald Hoffman, winner of the 1981 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, for developing a theory to explain organic chemical reactions. So why is this discovery of artificially making urea, why is that a great discovery? You know, there comes a time when you need a discovery, and it's sometimes a single one, to cross a border, to break down a wall. This is what this discovery was. Wow. It's not that it was so important in and of itself, but at the time that it came, the simple making of urea out of two inorganic chemicals, when it came, it caught people's attention. The whole story of the discovery is about the, the underlying basis, the building blocks of all matter, organic and inorganic, being the same, atoms.